If you only have $2,000 to spend on a full frame camera, we have three options for you. And one of them's gonna surprise you. Hi, I'm JP Morgan. And I'm Kenneth Merrill. And this is... Angela Whitworth. Angela's gorgeous and she's here to help us decide which one of these three cameras you would choose if you only had $2,000 to spend on a full frame camera. So if you want to jump into the full frame photography game, then we're here to provide a comparison between the Canon 6D Mark II, which is brand new, and the old school Canon 5D Mark III. Old school, there's no reason I'm holding this. And because Sony, Sony is everybody's favorite these days, we have the good old A7 Mark II. So those are three cameras that are in roughly, the, I mean, they're not exactly the same price range, but very comparable spec-wise, and certainly in the same price range pretty roughly. Roughly. They're all around $2,000, yeah. maybe a little under. It's about $1,500? Yeah, about that. And then the 6D Mark II is $2,000. The Mark III you can get brand new for $2,300, which means used you can probably get it for $1,800 pretty easily. Yeah. So. All pretty comparable. Pretty comparable specs. Let's take a look at them, see what we got. We're going to concentrate on picture quality, not necessarily, and we'll talk some about autofocus and focusing points and some of the other features. I mean, we know when it comes to features, the Sony cameras are just, just jam-packed with features. Mm -hmm. They are. Mm -hmm. Canon's not as much but we really want to look at picture quality. Sometimes we get so excited about, well, I can do this and that, but the reality is how good does a picture look? So we're gonna do four different scenarios. I, well, an ISO test. An ISO test, a uh, sort of film noir, dark contrast photo, uh, maybe something by the window, more natural light. Natural and light. And what's our last scenario? The last one's open shade, which is a scenario that everyone uses a lot, you know? So we wanna just see how they work in all those different areas. Yeah, well, so, let's jump right in. Let's get to it. So we've been out testing all morning with uh, Angela. She was yep. great, but she's a great model. Yeah, she was good. She did a good job. Yeah. So we did four different looks. Our thought about this was to not just talk about features and specs as much as picture quality. And so we wanted to see the cameras uh, kind of battling it out in different situations like open shade and a little more harsher light. Uh, inside of the window, which is very common, it's kind of things that most people would use more often. Right, just kind of uh, everyday sort of situations where you're not like pushing it to the extreme necessarily, but um, trying to capture what people are capturing on a daily yeah. basis. I think also, it, I'm excited to see how it turns out because I've always kind of wondered what's the real difference between the 6D series and the 5D series? Uh, what justifies that like $1,000 difference or mm -hmm. $1,500 difference? So. Well, we should kind of mention why we chose the Mark III, which is a very old camera. Yeah, well, I mean, we'd originally talked about comparing the A7 II and the 6D II because they're both, you know, like the... Spec-wise, very close. Spec-wise, very close, price very close, and they're both kind of the entry-level full-frame option for Sony and Canon, respectively. Um, but then you, you mentioned, well, if you had that kind of money, you might just buy a used 5D Mark III because... I know so many people who are still shooting on the Mark III. So. A lot of people are still using the Mark III. It's not like that camera. And, and sometimes we get so focused on new technology, right. reaching forward that you know these cameras are workhorses, and some of these cameras you know will be around for a long time. And getting a used Mark III would you could probably get one for seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars yeah. pretty easily. Yeah. Which puts it right between these two cameras, right. price-wise. So even though it's what four years older, five years older, mm -hmm. the question is how does it stand up to something that's brand new? Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at, uh, let's start with ISO. Let's just blast through the ISO, because okay. yep. they're pretty comparable, I think. I already can see a difference on the, the A7 II, in, not in terms of noise, but just in terms of color. The A7 II looks way more yellow to me than the, oh, yeah. uh, the Canons. Oh, yeah. The Canons have like a lot more magenta Which going on. you would expect. Yeah, that's I would typical. Expect. Do the Canons look that close to each other when you look at that, the fit quality? pretty similar. I mean, just look, obviously this is, 
A lot, of this shot a lot of this depends on the picture profile and the raw processing and stuff. Which we're just using standard yeah, just on standard. all of them. We're not doing any, you know, anything weird to them. These are raw images we're looking at, so there's no sharpening or anything that's been done to the images, just so you can look at the, uh, the grain. Um, let's just go ahead and skip down to 800 ISO, because I think that's when things start stop, to Stop it. Th humor me. Three, six, uh, 320. Uh, four, well, we didn't do 320, okay. but 400. We should have done, but <laughs> 400. They look super clean to me. I don't know why you won't shoot past 320. I just, when you start blowing them up. That's pro. I mean, granted, we are looking at it on a, what, 15 inch yeah. MacBook. So. All right, let's go to 800. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't I even see tell it. the difference. I, I see it in the shadow area. There, you start to get this kind of reddish, uh, grainy thing in the shadows mm -hmm. as they start mm -hmm. to make the transition. I see it on the 6D here. Uh, maybe a little bit on the Mark III. A teeny bit on the A7, but they're still, I mean, that's pretty dang clean for 800. I, I think the problem is I come from a video background, so noise is just a given there. You're going to have noise. <laughs> <laughs> <Well>. A <laughs> little different world. A little different world. Uh, yeah, actually, you do start to see it. 1600, the... You see it in this temple area, this this mid-shadow area is where you start to see it break up a little bit, and some, in the deep shadows as well, but the mid-shadow area where you make the transitions. The 5D looks the cleanest out of the three at this point. It does. Which, I mean, they're all still pretty clean. But they're clean. still very clean. Uh, are we gaining contrast? Yeah, that was the other, that's the other thing to look at, too, is you bump up the ISO, sometimes the contrast really starts to pop. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Sony... The exposure on the Sony is already lagging a little bit. Like it's getting mm -hmm. darker as we progress mm -hmm. in the ISOs. Uh, the other two don't seem to have that. Well, I don't know. The 6D seems like it's getting brighter. It could be a little more crunchy. A little bit. Well, let's go on. Let's go to. That's a 3200. That's a 3200. Let's, let's go to. 12, let's get wild. 12,800. 12, all right. They're all pretty noisy at this point, uh, which was to be expected. Um, I would say they're pretty cool. Actually, at. On this image, it looks like the 60s slightly cleaner to me, just a tiny bit. Uh, they're all very similar, though, I would say. I, I think the Sony is, has the most grain. If you look at the grain on her cheek and oh, on her yeah, you're right. the right hand side, I think yeah, we you start kind to see the start most to lose, grain. You lose the detail look at the grain in the background above the color chart. And if you also look at the exposure, like the, the darker areas of the Sony, are dropping a lot more in exposure because the background, like if the background is, the background mm -hmm. is much darker in the Sony than the other two. But this is 12,800 for crying out loud. <laughs> what do you expect? What do you expect? Um, then you have 25,000, obviously, I mean, super grainy. Yep. I would never shoot this high. But again, the Sony. Any one of these three dingier. cameras is very, 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 very competitive with each other, usable imagery. So between the 6D and the 5D, what, what do you think? Uh, to my eye, it almost feels like the 60s is a little cleaner. If you look at the midtones on the background. Yeah, I think you're right. Bit. A little bit, yeah. It's probably the new processor. We're looking at 64, yeah. Because you have the Digic 7 processor, which is like two generations yep. further. Yep. So. But still, you're, you're talking about you're really... It's really if you're shooting really down at 600 peeping. ISO or below, you're not going to see it. Right, right. They're but all, those, all three of those point. cameras really uh, are competing well with each other. All right, so now let's move on to some of our other shots. So we chose this film noir just to kind of see how it, you know, how the shadows roll, or the highlight, highlights roll into the shadows, and how the highlights hold, and what, what gives you a pretty image. Um, yeah, it's always nice to see like a one light scenario. Mm -hmm. I, that's like my favorite way to light, honestly, for portraits. Um, and watching that roll off from light to dark and see how fa seeing how fast that transitions is really uh, informative. It looks to me like the 60 is a little crunchier. It definitely is. It's a much higher contrast. It, it you could, don't see her ear as much. Right. It could be because of the angle of her head with the light. You know, obviously she's moving around a little it's bit. Possible, but you know, it's look at her angle of her head is not that much different than the the 5D. That's true. You know, and yeah, I think it's just a little little more a little more contrast there, so we don't see into the shadows quite as much. So does that mean we have a little less dynamic range? Eh. I don't know, or it could be the gamma. Mm -hmm. At this point, I mean, later on we tested the underexposure and yeah. we can see how far you can push it. Maybe there is less information there. So the next uh, test we did was a window light test. So this is like a really common scenario where you're shooting in like a studio with window light or a hotel room or something like that. And you want to use that broad source as your key. A7 exposure is a little hotter. It's, I yeah, don't think it's that a little was brighter. 
and the, it's certainly a lot more open. I don't it think was hard a, because there was, I mean, it was sunlight coming in the window, and there was clouds, clouds and stuff, coming so it was and constantly going. changing. The exposure was constantly changing. So it's not a real fair comparison because right now the Sony looks very open, less contrasty, whereas the right. others look. Yeah, I don't know that we've learned anything from this because the consistency of the light uh, changes. Of the light changing doesn't doesn't give us a real fair comparison. So here's our we underexpose this these by two stops. Um, which is pretty dark. It holds the window detail better, it's, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, the window's there perfectly. It's not like a block of white, um, but obviously her skin, this is like way too dark on her. And then we pulled all three of them up by two stops in post. And they all recover really well. Two stops isn't a ton, but you would expect to see. But it's like two stops, you some. say, isn't a ton. But if you're at all competent in hitting an exposure, two stops is a ton. <laughs> it's a ton. True. That's true. That's I mean, true. generally speaking, you miss it by half a stop, miss it by a stop. You're really right, feeling right, like, whoa, right, right. you know, if you miss it by a stop and a half. But you're looking at this going, you can be underexposed, and these are whole, they can recover and, and look good. They all do. Again, you do see a little more of the yellow in the skin tone on the Sony on this one. Yep. Uh, and the 6D actually seems a little more magenta to my eye than the I've seen that all along. Canna. It seems like it's a little, more, a little, more little bit more magenta, just a bit, than yeah, the Mark III, which that. surprises me because I always thought the Mark III was pretty magenta. <laughs> more magenta. More Not magenta. enough. More <laughs> magenta. <laughs> on, on the next camera, we should add more. <laughs> <laughs> Up the magenta. <laughs> um, they're all really clean when you bring up. Even when you're looking at like her hair and stuff like that, I still don't see any noise, which really surprises me. Yeah. I would have expected at least the detail in her hair to just kind of fall away. But for the most part, it comes back, except in like the deep shadows. This is an outside scenario in the shade. Well, we have a, a, we uh, have a silk. silk up, so it just yeah. softens everything out. And uh, these are really pretty. I mean, it gives us nice, we at 2.0, so the background falls out on a 50 millimeter lens. Yeah, they all look good to me, honestly. I kind of feel like this test is just showing how great all these cameras can be. I'm feeling like all the way along. These are yeah. pretty competitive <laughs> with each other. I'm yeah, not... yeah. I mean, when you punch in, the sharpness is very similar. The mm -hmm. dynamic range is very similar. The noise is very similar. The color is pretty similar uh, as far as they can be. We shot some over... So we overexposed, overexposed these by, by two, two stops. stops. And then we recovered them. Uh, there is a little bit of, of, of a difference here. First of all, it should be noted... The Sony one that we overexposed, we didn't have the silk up anymore. The sun was too high. The we sun just was too high. We to lost work. it. So we're in direct sunlight on that one. It's so, a little unfair to the Sony, but it still holds up crazy well. It's unfair to it, but in the, uh, on the other hand, it held up and recovered that extremely Almost well in everything. direct sun. The yeah. only points are, that are clipping are just under her right shoulder, on her forehead, yep. on the tip of her nose, and it still looks fine. It's a usable image. Yep. The other two cleaned up really well, except the 6D. If you look behind her, the ground is just nuclear. But and you're getting that here that as well on the 5D, aren't you? But to my eye, it seems like the 5D doesn't go all ugly. Look at the pink shift in the background. Exactly. And the, look at the green. It's more green on the on the fight. So it, I'm talking about the 6D looks a little more pink in that sidewalk behind. Yeah, yeah. exactly. When it clips, it just does this weird thing. And even in her dress, it turns a little pink. Mm -hmm. um, it's hmm. strange. The Sony, the sidewalk didn't clip at all, but I'm thinking that's because we had the to shade, expose it. The yeah, shade had yeah, come exactly, in on that so. side, so I, I think in the same with the background, it was a little, the lighting was a little different. So I would say the 5D works well. I think the A7 works well. The 6D doesn't work as well for me. It just doesn't seem as smooth in terms of uh, fixing it. You know, the, because yeah. the background and the still very the white. There's all no weird. knockout punch here uh, by any means. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what we learned in this process. We've got similar. Uh, Sensor sizes as far as, you know, full right, frame. We've right. got megapixels are very similar to one another. Yeah, I mean, 24, like, 27, I mean, they're within a few of each other. Within four megapixels yeah. of each other, yeah. So I don't think there's any clear advantage. There are some things that the uh, the uh, 6D, you have the pull-out screen, which is really nice. Everyone loves that. Yeah. And which this, is fabulous. It's lighter weight. Yeah. But n it, they feel the same weight to me. I'd say the A7 is a little heavier. Do we have a battery in this one? No, we do not. Okay, yeah, with the battery, they'd probably be about identical. Yeah. So the A7 would pack smaller. Um, I mean... Yeah, the A7 is much smaller. We said we weren't going to talk about features as much, but honestly, after looking at all those images, I feel like the features are the distinguishing. They are. Because image-wise, they all look super similar. I, personally, I think the 6D probably came out on the bottom just in a few minor ways. In the, as far as the, the image as quality. As far as the image quality goes. Mm -hmm. It shifted a little pink too much. It, it was a little bit uh, 
more crunchy, though you could probably fix that in post. It didn't hold the highlights quite as well. I mean, it's really slight, but it's like if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with one of the other two. Um, but at the same time, because the images are all very similar, you do have to kind of look at the features, and the 6D does have some cool features. It has a fully articulable screen. It has the GPS built in, which is huge. I think it might be one of the only Canon cameras with a GPS. The GPS built in, which, which isn't, is pretty amazing. It's not a big deal to most people, but like, I when I travel, it would be pretty cool to have my photos tagged with like the Great Wall yeah, or wherever, true. you know. So like later in the future, if I don't remember where a photo is taken, it'll tell me. Well, that that's way, cool. uh, when you put a photo up, everyone in the world can get to that exact same spot and get your exact, <laughs> exact same, same image photo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the true. exact same day on the exact <laughs> same day. But, but that's the one. There is Wi-Fi capability in these two cameras. Not Old school, no Wi-Fi, and that's always been the case with right. the 5D. The, and the five, you know, Mark IV doesn't yeah. either. Uh, on the other hand, the the Canons are both. I think they're both weather sealed, whereas I don't believe the A7 is. No. Uh, maybe weather, weather resistant, whatever that means. Wait, new, this is around 1500 this is around uh, 2000 this is around $2,300. New. Right. But I, I would, I mean, I have no problem buying uh, used yeah, cameras yeah. if you're careful about it, you mm -hmm. know, and you just check them out really well. And you can certainly get the Mark III for $1,800. Definitely. Uh, which puts it in between these two cameras for, as far as price goes. The frames per second are pretty similar on all mm -hmm. of them. Um, the autofocus features yeah. on the 6D are, are far superior to that of the 5D. But, but head to it head has, with the uh, A7. It, A7 it has too. so many. It has so fewer autofocus points, though. So. You know, you we should look, talk about that. It drives me crazy. I don't think this Mark III has enough autofocus yeah. points. Someone's in trouble. Um, it's a camera comparison, please. <laughs> Yeah, the the five D Mark III has sixty one sixty one cross whatever autofocus points, and it's it's not quite to the edges. You're constantly like fighting the boundaries, and then you look through the viewfinder of the sixty, and there are forty five of them, and they're all right in, in the, the middle. middle. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me either. It's it, for autofocus, it's much more difficult. Yeah, you're losing the round now. For this camera, the A seven two, it is. It's just it's almost edge to edge. Edge to edge. You got yeah. autofocus points like uh, over a hundred and some odd. But we did find out that if you're not using your native lenses, then that it uh, kind of reduces it. It was it bunching for some them reason. on our camera with that yeah. metabones. It may have been the metabones we had on. We had a Sigma metabones on it. So I'm not sure if that had something to do with it or what. But yeah, I I guess so. We we put the adapter on because we wanted to use the same lens on mm -hmm. all of them uh, for this test because we were stressing the image quality so much. But anyways, and that's my other thing too is. If you're buying into a new system, that doesn't matter. But if you're switching over, then having to adapt lenses and stuff can be a pain. Yeah, if I was going to, if I was going to really, you know, commit myself to a camera uh, Sony, I would buy the lenses. Absolutely. You know, get in that same world. So. One disadvantage of the Sony is the battery life. It's terrible. We have all known that forever. The battery yeah, life yeah. is uh, such a major weakness. Uh, the Mark Threes, we shot two days, Friday and Saturday, on the Mark Threes, and I think we used two batteries for yeah. two days. So we shot 6,000, uh, no, 3,000 images in two days. On two batteries. On two batteries. Yeah. And, and one of the batteries wasn't exhausted. Yeah. It was still had plenty of life in yeah. it. Whereas on this, I couldn't have gotten through the day, uh, the two days without uh, six or eight batteries mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. So that is, a, that is a problem. And part of the reason, it's, it's having to power the EVF. Right. You know, it's got a lot of things right. it's doing, and they're a smaller battery footprint. Yeah, I don't know. There, there are a lot of pros and cons to either. It's hard to say, well, this is the winner and stuff. Uh, personally, if you're, if you're going to give me $2,000 and say, buy one of these three cameras, uh, I don't know that I would choose the 6D, except that it has a GPS, which is such a cool feature. <laughs> I don't, love that, I, don't you? I love it. I mean, <laughs> video-wise, which is mostly what I do, none of these cameras is really that great. No, they all top out at 1080p, yeah. si or 60 frames, so it's not a big deal. But the GPS is such a cool feature for travel photography, which is when I do most of my photography, so when I travel. It really kind of almost comes down to, do you want to buy Canon or do you want to buy Sony? Man, that really is kind of the it. 6D is exactly what you'd expect from a, a like an entry-level full-frame camera yeah. from Canon, um, but it also has GPS. Yep. <laughs> so if I was a young uh, student about starting out and wanted to decide what, you know, what platform, I would either buy, I would probably either buy the Mark III, just because, mm -hmm. well, it's I don't know. It's tried and true. It, and it's, it's tried and true. But if you love autofocus features, then I would consider the, the 6D because of autofocus but features. But the autofocus points are so the, small. The focus points drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, this is probably the gem in a lot of ways. If I was starting out, 
You're gonna yeah. buy all new lenses. I'd probably get into the. the it's only uh, fifteen hundred dollars. It's fifteen hundred dollars. And it competes. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's pretty pretty hard to resist. So there are uh, options here. It's like every time every time Kenneth and I have this conversation, I come up to the same conclusion. That is that there is no conclusion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So look at the images that we took. Um, and decide for yourself. You. Do you like the more magenta, you know, whatever that Canon has, or do you like the Sony look? It's honestly, it's flavor of the day. Yep, that's how it is. So three great cameras, and there's even so three great cameras, and there's a lot of other cameras out there we can compare them with. But in that full frame market, at that price range, there's three options. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. One of the things I've really enjoyed almost the most in my career is the opportunity to sit down with other photographers and to help them overcome some of the problems that they face. I mean, I've been in this business for a long, long time, and I know the problems you're facing. I know the things you need to overcome. If you'll call in and join me in a mentoring call, I can help you overcome a lot of the issues that you just don't know what to do with. Things about pricing, things about how to position yourself in the market, portfolio issues, how to shoot even. I mean, I just love the opportunity to sit down one-on-one. -on -one. We can talk together either by Skype or a phone call, have an opportunity to be able to mentor you and help you overcome these issues you face. So go to thesliderlens.com, there's a mentoring button there. Click on the button and find a time when we can sit down together. Subscribe to The Slender Lens, like all my buddies here did. You can come and hang out with us. We have a wild time together, me and my buddies here, my mannequin buddies. We have a great time together, so come and join the Slender Lens, subscribe. You can be friends with us too.